Okay. Well, Kalia's got hers. You guys ready? So it's called The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate. Some of the chapters are super short. So the first chapter is called Hello. I am Ivan. I'm a gorilla. It's not as easy as it looks. That's the whole chapter. Next one's called Names. People call me the Freeway Gorilla, the eight that eggs at eight, the one and only Ivan, Mighty Silverback. The names are mine, but they're not me. I'm Ivan, just Ivan, only Ivan. Humans waste words. They toss them around like banana peels and leave them to rot. Everyone knows that the peels are the best part. I suppose you think gorillas can't understand you. Of course, you also probably think we can't walk upright. You try knuckle walking for an hour and you tell me which way is more fun. Next chapter is called Patience. I've learned to understand human words over the years, but understanding human speech is not the same as understanding humans. Humans speak way too much. They chatter like chimpanzees, crowding the world with their noise, even when they have nothing to say. It took me some time to recognize all those human words and to weave them into things, but I was patient. Patient is a useful way to be when you're an ape. Gorillas are as patient as stones. Humans, not so much. Next chapter is called How I Look. I used to be a wild gorilla, and I still look the part. I have the gorilla shy gaze and a gorilla's fly smile. I wear a snowy saddle of fur, the uniform of a silverback. And when the sun warms my back, I cast a gorilla's majestic shadow. So you're going to hear them call Ivan a silverback a lot in this um, book. The, some of the gorillas, they call silverbacks because the hair on their back is almost gray. And so it's just one of the types of gorillas. You'll hear Ivan talk about silverbacks a lot. In my size, humans see a test of themselves. They hear fighting words on the wind. And when I'm all think and when all I'm thinking is how the late day reminds me of a ripe nectarine. I'm mightier than any human. Four hundred pounds of pure power, and my body looks like I'm made for battle. My arms outstretched span taller than the tallest human being. My family tree spreads wide as well. I am a great ape, and you are a great ape. And so are chips and orangutans and bonbos, and all of us are distant cousins. I know this is troubling. It's hard to find to believe that there's a connection across time and space, linking me to a race of ill-mannered clowns. Chips, there is no excuse in the world for chimpanzees. I do not think he's a fan of chimpanzees. This chapter is called The Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. I live in a human habitat called the Big, the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. We are conveniently located off I-95 with shows at 2, 4, and 7, 365 days a year. Max says that when he answers this, Max says that when he answers the trilling telephone. Mac works here at my mall. He's the boss. I work here too. I'm the gorilla. At the Big Top Mall, a creaky music carousel spins all day and night, and monkeys and parrots live among the merchants. In the middle of the mall is a ring with benches, and humans can sit on their rumps while they eat soft pretzels. What's a rump? I don't know. Kira, what's a rump? If humans sit on their rump. You're muted. A butt. Yeah, it's their butt. The humans sit on their butt all day long. The floor is covered in sawdust that's made out of dead trees. My domain, so they're going to talk about his domain a lot. It's kind of his cage where he lives. My domain is at one end of the room. I live here because I am too much gorilla and I'm not enough human. Stella's domain is next to mine. Stella's an elephant. She and Bob, who is a dog, are my nearest friends. At present, I don't have any gorilla friends. My domain is made of thick glass and rusty metal and rough cement. Stella's d domain is made of metal bars. The sun bears... Domain, the sun bear's domain is wood, and the parrot's is wire mesh. Three of my walls are glass, and one of them is cracked. And a small piece about the size of my hand is missing from the bottom corner. 
I made the hole with the baseball bat that Mac gave me for my sixth birthday. And after that, he took the bat away. But he let me keep the baseball that came with it. A jungle scene is painted on my domain wall. There's a waterfall without any water, and flowers without scents, and trees without roots. I didn't paint it, but I enjoy the way that the shapes flow across the wall, even if it's not like a I'm lucky my domain has three windowed walls. I can see the whole mall and I walk into the world beyond. The frantic pinball machines and the pink billows of cotton candy and the vast treeless parking lot. Beyond the lot is a freeway where the cars stampede without end and a giant sign at the edge beckons and calls them to stop and rest like gazelles at the watering hole. The sign is all faded and the colors are bleeding, but I know what it says. Mac read it to me one day. Come to the exit eight, Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, home of the one and only Ivan, Mighty Silverback. Here's the sign. So Ivan lives in this mall that they turn kind of into a circus. So he's explaining to you all the other animals that live there and what he sees. Sadly, I can't read, although I wish I could. Reading stories would fill all these empty hours. Once, however, I was able to enjoy a book that was left in my domain by one of the keepers. It kind of tasted like termites. He enjoyed the book by eating it. The freeway billboard has a drawing of Mac in his clown clothes and Stella on her hind legs and an angry animal with fierce eyes and crazy hair. The animal's supposed to be me, but the artist made a mistake. I'm never angry. So there's Mac the clown. Stella's the elephant. We're going to hear a lot about Stella. And then this is Ivan, but he's saying he's never actually angry. Anger is precious. A silverback gorilla uses anger to maintain order and warn his troop of danger. When my father beat his chest, it was to say, beware, listen, I am in charge. I am angry to protect you because that is what I was told to do. But here in my domain, there's no one to protect. This chapter is called The Little Big Top on Earth. The so big top would be what? If we talk about a big top, what are they talking about? Like a big top tent. Do you guys know what a big top is? No? A big top is another. Do you know, Clea? Unmute yourself, hon. No? A big top's another name for a circus. So you know a lot of times they put the circus in those giant red and white striped tents, and it's got a really big top on its tall. So when they talk about big top, it's just another name for a circus. My neighbor here at the Big Top Mall knows many tricks. They are educated, and they're a lot more accomplished than I am. One of my neighbors plays baseball, even though she's a chicken. And another drives a fire truck, even though he's a rabbit. I used to have a neighbor that was a thoughtful seal who could balance a ball on the end of her nose from dawn until dusk. Her voice was like a throaty bark of a dog, chained outside on a cold night. Children wished on pennies and tossed them into the seal's pool that glowed at the bottom of like flat stones. The seal was hungry one day or bored, or maybe. So she ate about a hundred pennies. Mac said she'd be fine. Mac was mistaken. Mac ca calls our show the littlest big top on earth. And every day at two o'clock, four o'clock and seven, humans fan themselves, they drink sodas and they applaud. Babies wail and Mac dressed like a clown pedals a little tiny bike. And a dog named Snickers rides on Stella the elephant's back and Stella sits on a stool. It's a very sturdy stool. I don't do any tricks. Mac says it's enough for me just to be me. Stella told me that some circuses move from town to town, and they have humans who dangle on ropes, twin twining from the top of the tents, and they have rumbling lions with big teeth and snaking lines of elephants, each one clutching the tail of the one in front of them. The elephants look so far off in the distance that they won't see the humans who want to see them. Our circus doesn't migrate and move. We sit here where we are like an old beast, too tired to move on. After a show, humans push through the stores, a store is where humans buy things that they need to survive. At the Big Top Mall, some stores sell new things like balloons and t-shirts and caps to cover their gleaming heads. And some stores sell old things that smell dusty, like they were long and forgotten. All day, I watch the humans run from store to store. They pass their green paper like old leaves smelling of a thousand hands back and forth. What green paper would humans pass back and forth at stores? 
Think about it. You go to a store, and what's the green paper you might give them, Kalia? Dollars. Yeah, money, like dollar bills. So, like, for us, it's like, oh, it's money. But a gorilla, all he sees is a green piece of paper. So he's just watching these humans. They hunt the humans frantically, stalking and pushing and grumbling. They lean, holding bags with things, things, soft things, big things. But no matter how big the bag is full, they always come back for more. Humans are clever. They spin pink cloud that you can eat. What would be at a circus that's a pink cloud that you can eat? Cotton candy. Yeah, cotton candy, just. And they build domains with flat waterfalls. But humans are lousy hunters. Next chapter's gone. Some animals live privately, unwatched, but that's not my life. My life is flashing lights and pointing fingers and uninvited visitors. Inches away, humans flatten their little hands against the wall of the glass that separates us. The glass says that you are this and we are that, and this is how it will always be. Humans leave their fingerprints behind, sticky with candy and slick with sweat. And each night, an old man comes to wipe them away. Sometimes I push my nose up against the glass. My nose print, like your fingerprint, is the first and last and the only one. The man wipes the glass, and then I am gone. Next chapter is called The Artist. Here in my domain, I don't have much to do. You can only throw so many meatballs at a human before you get bored. A meatball is made by rolling up the dung until it's the size of a small apple and letting it dry. I always keep a few of them on hand. What's dung, Kalia? Yep. Yeah, dung is another word for poop. So he says he makes meatballs by rolling up dung until it's the size of an apple. He just has balls of poop that he keeps in his cage. Ew. <laughs> he says, for some reason, my visitors never seem to carry any meatballs. In my domain, I have a tire swing, a baseball, a tiny plastic pool filled with dirty water, and an old TV. I have a stuffed toy gorilla, too. Julia, the daughter of the old man that cleans the mall each night, gave it to me. My gorilla stuffed animal has empty eyes and floppy limbs, but I sleep with it every night. I call it not Tag. Tag was my twin sister. Julia is 10 years old. She has hair like black glass and a wide, half moon smile. She and I have a lot in common. We're both great apes, and we're both artists. I was... It was Julia who first gave me my, uh, my first crayon and a stubby blue one. She slipped it through the broken spot in my glass along with a folded up piece of paper. I knew what to do with it. I watched Julia draw. When I dragged the crayon across the paper, it left a trail in its wake like a slithering blue snake. Julia's drawings are wild with color and movement. She draws things that aren't real, clouds that smile and cars that swim. She draws until her crayons break and her paper rips. Her pictures are like pieces from a dream. I can't draw dreamy pictures. I never remember my dreams, although sometimes I awake with my fists clenched and my heart hammering fast. My drawings seem pale and timid next to Julia's. She draws the ideas in her head. I just draw the things in my head. Simple items that fill my day. An apple core, banana peel, a candy wrapper, except I often eat these things before I draw them. But even though I draw the same thing over and over again, I never get bored with art. When I'm drawing, that's all I think about. I don't think about where I am, about yesterday or about tomorrow. I just move my crayon across the paper. Humans don't always recognize what I've drawn. They squint and they cock their head to the side and they murmur, I'll draw a banana, a perfectly lovely banana. And they'll say, look, it's a yellow airplane. Or it's a duck with no wings. That's all right. I'm not drawing for the humans. I'm drawing for myself. Max soon realized that people would pay for a picture made by a gorilla, even if they don't know what it is. And now I draw every day. My work sells for $20 a piece. $25 if you buy a frame at the gift shop near my domain. And if I get tired and need a break, I just eat my crayons. So here's some of Ivan's pictures that he's drawn. I can barely even see him. You what? I can barely even see him. Yeah, they're not very dark. Clea's got him too. Would you guys pay $20 for a picture that a gorilla drew? Yeah. No, that's no, mean. no, Joss and Kira say yeah. Would you, Kalia? Yeah. I like things. 
I would. And the next one is called Shapes and Clouds. I think I've always been an artist. Even as a baby, still clinging to my mom, I had an artist's eye. I saw shapes in the clouds and sculptures in the tumbled stone at the bottom of the stream. I grabbed at the colors, a crimson flower just out of reach and the ebony bird streaking past. I don't remember much about my early life, but I do remember this. Whenever I got the chance, I would dip my fingers in the cool mud and I would use that on my mom's back like a canvas. So he would paint on his mom's back with mud. She was a patient soul, my mother was. The chapter's called Imagination. One day I hope I can draw the way Julia draws, imagining worlds that don't exist yet. I know what most humans think. They think that gorillas don't have imaginations. They think we don't remember our past or think and ponder about our future. Come to think of it, I suppose they have a point. Mostly I think about what is, not what could be. I warned not to get my hope up. Next chapter is called The Loneliest Gorilla in the World. When the Big Top Mall was first built, it smelled of new paint and fresh hay, and humans came to visit from morning until night. They drifted past my domain like logs in a lazy river. Lately, a whole day might go by without a single visitor. Max says he's worried. He says, I'm not cute anymore. He says, Ivan, you've lost your magic, old guy. You used to be a hit. It's true that some of my visitors don't linger the way they used to. They stare through the glass and they cluck their tongues and they frown while I watch my TV. He looks lonely, they say. Not so long ago, a little boy stood before my glass, tears running down his face. He must be the loneliest gorilla in the world, he said, clutching his mother's hand. At times like that, I wish humans could understand me the way I understand them. It's not so bad, I wanted to tell the little boy. With enough time, you can get used to almost anything. Next chapter is called TV. My visitors are often surprised when they see the TV that Mac put in my domain. They seem to find it odd, the sight of a gorilla staring at tiny humans in a box. But sometimes I wonder, though, isn't that the way they stare at me? Sitting in a tiny box? Isn't that just as weird? What's up, Joss? How many chapters are we going to read? Um, I'm going to read for about 20, 25 minutes, so just a couple more minutes. The chapters aren't really numbered. Oh. And some of them are only like a page long. My TV's old and it doesn't always work. And sometimes days will go by before anyone remembers to turn my TV on. I'll watch anything. But I'm particularly fond of cartoons with their bright jungle colors. I especially enjoy it when someone slips and falls on a banana peel. Bob, my dog friend, loves TV almost as much as I do. He prefers to watch professional bowling and the cat food commercials. Bob and I have seen so many romance movies too. In a romance movie, there's a lot of hugging and sometimes face licking. I have yet to say a single romance movie with gorillas though. We also enjoy old Western movies. In a Western, someone says, this town ain't big enough for the both of us, Sheriff. And in a Western, you can tell who's the good guys and who's the bad guys. And the good guys always win. Bob says Westerns are nothing like real life. I'll read one more chapter for today. This one's called The Nature Show. I've been in my domain for 9,855 days, alone. For a while, I was young and foolish, and I thought I was the last gorilla on Earth, and I tried not to dwell and think on it. Still, it's hard to stay upbeat and happy when you think there's no more of you. And then one night, after I watched a movie about men in black hats with guns and feeble-minded horses, a different show came on. It was not a cartoon or a western or a romance. I saw a lush forest. I heard birds murmuring and the grass moved and the trees rustled. And then I saw him. He was threadbare and scrawny and not as good looking as I am. But to be honest, sure enough, he was a gorilla. As suddenly as he appeared, the gorilla vanished, and in his place was a scruffy white animal called, I learned, a polar bear. And then a chubby water creature that they called a manatee. And then another and another. All night I wondered about that gorilla I'd seen. Where did he live? Would he ever come to visit? If, if there was a he somewhere, could there be a she? Or was it just the two of us alone in the world? in our own separate boxes. Oh, I was gonna stop, but we're gonna meet one more character. 
She's the other important character. Last chapter. This one's called Stella. Stella says she is sure I will see another gorilla in live gorilla someday. But I believe her because she's older than I am. And she has eyes like black stars. And she knows more than I will ever know. Stella is a mountain. Next to her, I'm a rock. And Bob looks like a grain of sand. Every night when the stores close and the moon washes the world with milky night, Stella and I talk. We don't have much in common, but we have enough. We are huge and we are alone. And we both love yogurt raisins. Sometimes Stella tells stories of her childhood, of the leafy canopies hidden by the mist, and of a busy song of flowing water. Unlike me, Stella remembers everything in her past. Stella loves the moon and his untroubled smile. I love the feel of the sun on my belly. She says, it's quite a bit of a belly, my friend. And I say, thank you. So is your belly. We talk, but not too much. Elephants like gorillas don't like to waste words. So this is Stella. Stella used to perform in a large, famous circus, and she still does some of those tricks for our show. And during one stunt, Stella stands on her hind legs while Snickers jumps on her bed. On the, I'm sorry, on her head. It's hard to say, it's hard to stand on your hind legs when you weigh more than 40 men. If you're a circus elephant and you stand on your hind legs while a dog jumps on your head, you get a treat. If you do not, the claw stick comes swinging at you. Elephants hide as thick as bark on an ancient tree, but a claw stick can pierce their skin like a leaf. Once, Stella saw a trainer hit a bull elephant with a claw stick. A bull is like a silverback, noble, and calm like a cobra. When a claw stick caught that bull's flesh, he tossed the trainer in the air with his tusk. The man flew, Stella said, like an ugly bird, and she never saw that bull elephant again. So we will stop there. So our three main characters so far that you're going to see again tomorrow are Ivan the gorilla, Stella the elephant, and Bob the little dog. So I will stop there. If you're reading along, I stopped on page 29. And tomorrow, Mr. Barry will hop on and read starting at 10 o'clock. And we'll read for another 20, 25 minutes. And see who else we meet. So if